GNOME is my favorite Linux desktop environment, so when it gets an update, I'm obviously going to check it out. And I was expecting GNOME 45 to be a relatively small, uninteresting upgrade. But they kept adding stuff to it as time went on, and it ended up being a pretty sizable release. So today we'll dive into all the changes to the shell, the look, the apps, the settings, the compositor, and most of them are really, really good. Just like this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, your all-in-one solution to ensure that your Linux server and workstation fleet stays secure with minimal downtime. This week, they are letting you win a free pass to Supercomputing Conference, the international conference for high-performance computing, networking, storage, and analysis. It will happen from November the 12th to November 17th in Denver, Colorado. That's in the USA, if you were wondering. Tuxcare is hosting a giveaway, which you can enter for free, and you'll get a chance to win a guest pass to the exhibition floor, plus a free trial for a Tuxcare security product for your company and a Tuxcare gift bag as well. Anyone who's working for an organization that uses Alma Linux and who's 21 and older can enter the giveaway. So click the link in the description below and try to win this free pass. Okay, back to GNOME 45. The first change you will notice is the activities button. Functionally, it's the same. You click it, it opens the activities view. But visually, it's now more useful. It shows your current virtual desktop as a pill and the other available virtual desktops as small circles, so you know where you are in your strip of desktops. Now, it doesn't give you any view of the number of apps or which apps are on which desktop, but it's still a cool reminder of where you are currently. You can also now scroll over this button to move to the previous or next desktop, although I would say it's still more efficient to use touchpad gestures or keyboard shortcuts. I guess if you're on a laptop and you're using X11 for some reason, then maybe it's more efficient than moving your hands to the keyboard for using a keyboard shortcut. But anyways, it's good to have another way of doing the same thing. This change also comes with the removal of the app menu from the top bar. You won't see the name of the currently focused application in there anymore. Now, this menu was pretty useless. It had a few controls that you already had either in the dock when right-clicking the app icon or just some window controls. But it does mean that if your theme has poor contrast between active and inactive windows, then you might have a harder time knowing which window is currently in focus. I would say it's not a problem for the default Advaita Light or Advaita Dark theme, but depending on how good or poor your vision is, it might be a problem. Still, generally, I like this whole new set of changes. Now, the quick settings also got a few tweaks. First, you now get the ability to control keyboard backlight from this little menu. On supported hardware, you will now get a small pill button that you can click to enable or disable the backlight. And you can unfold it using the little arrow to select the exact light level you want, depending on what your keyboard actually supports, of course. You can also open the quick settings menu with a keyboard shortcut now, which is Super plus S. And that's going to be very useful if you have a big ultra wide display to avoid throwing your mouse in the top right corner all the time. In the top bar next to these quick settings, you will also get a new webcam activity indicator. When an app is accessing your webcam through pipe wire, you will see a small icon in there, just like the previous icons for microphone access or for screen recording. Now, these are small touches, but they do make your desktop a bit more efficient and they do make you a bit more aware of what's currently being accessed or used, which is always good. The background apps feature hasn't really gotten more useful since it still doesn't give you a context menu, but at least when you hit the close button, you will see a small spinner to indicate that it's actually being closed. Now, GNOME 45 doesn't change much in terms of look and feel. The Advaita cursor theme has changed a tiny bit with a longer stem for the main mouse cursor and revamped cursors for dragging stuff and hovering over clickable links, but the changes are really minor. There is also a true light theme available, although you will have to enable it using deconf or through an extension. It makes the top bar and all the shell elements light themed. When the default light theme is in reality mixed, apps are light, but the shell theme itself is dark. 
The GNOME team wants to explore how things will look and work in this mode, so that's why it's not the default, but you can still enable it if you really want that. Apart from that, there is a new split header bar look that reached a few applications like the settings, the calendar or the file manager. It basically makes all the panels of the app full height instead of being split horizontally by the header bar. It looks less heavy and nicer, but it also makes certain apps a bit less space efficient. For example, in Nautilus, the back and forward buttons and the path bar were aligned to the left of the window. Now they're aligned to the left of their panel, which means the path bar is a lot shorter, even though the main menu moved to the left part of the app. So if you navigate long file paths, you actually lose space with the new design and you didn't gain vertical space either. It is not a huge deal. You can always just make the window a bit bigger and that's gonna solve the problem, but it does feel like a change made for the sake of aesthetics instead of being made for the sake of usability. It doesn't affect any other app in the same way though, so in the end, it doesn't really matter. There were a lot of changes to the GNOME apps as well in GNOME 45. First is Nautilus with the aforementioned split header bar design, but it also gained a way faster search. Tracker, the search backend, has been improved and can cache query results, which means it's noticeably faster to return stuff. Once a search has completed, you also get a search everywhere button that now lets you search the whole file system, not just the current folder and its subdirectories. So that should please a lot of people. Selecting columns in the list view is now a bit nicer looking with more recent libadvita components. You can move the columns around to change the order and you can apply the changes to all folders or just the one you're viewing. Small changes, but definitely welcome. Nautilus always felt a bit bare bones and a bit slow, so I guess now it's fixed. Now there's also a brand new image viewer for GNOME called Loop, which is the French word for magnifying glass. It replaces the old Eye of GNOME viewer and functionally it's pretty much the same, but it's much more in line with modern GNOME apps. It supports touchpad and touchscreen gestures to move to the previous or next image. You can zoom in with a two finger pinch it can display the image's metadata, it can copy the image to the clipboard or delete it, it lets you print it or set it as a background, and it's nicely animated and it just looks like a modern GNOME app. On the other hand, the old GNOME Photos app is no longer a core app for GNOME because it's pretty much unmaintained. Other core app changes are Snapshot, the new camera app that replaced Cheese as the default in GNOME. It's a basic camera app. It lets you record a video or take a picture of your face using your webcam. GNOME Calendar also gained a lot of cool stuff in GNOME 45, notably infinite scrolling in the month view. Scrolling up or down will move you to the next or previous month, which is really useful. The events dialog has also been revamped using libadvita components and looks more in line with modern GNOME apps. You can also now press F5 to sync all online calendars or Control alt plus m to manage all available calendars. Gnome Console got a new preference item to customize fonts, Gnome Maps gained a new experimental vector-based tile set, and the Connections app for handling remote desktops now supports copying text, files, and images through RDP. Epiphany, also known as Gnome Web, got the Tab Overview, which lets you preview all your web browser tabs in a visual grid. This looks really good and it's really helpful to find the website you're looking for. The GNOME Font Viewer, Simple Scan, and the Baobab Disk Usage Analyzer also got ported to GDK4 this time around, so there shouldn't be much that's still GDK3 now. And finally, the Calculator app now handles more currencies and currency conversions. And of course, GNOME Software got some small updates as well. First, you'll get an OS upgrade indicator that will let you know when your system needs to be updated and when it's up to date. It will also show you a notification when updates to the core system are downloaded and waiting for a reboot to be installed. For Flatpak apps, you will also get the option to clear the app storage when you uninstall it. Basically, you will remove all the data associated with the app, similar to what KD added recently in Discover. Flatpak apps that are end of life, as in they will not receive updates anymore, will be marked as such in the app page in GNOME software and in the installed apps list as well. 
That's a nice little touch to let you know that something that you use is currently completely unmaintained or something that you wanted to install is also completely unmaintained. Now this is harder to show here, but the window manager and compositor called Mutter has gotten much better in GNOME 45. First, it now supports YUV or YUV color space, which is generally used for video and image processing. The compositor can now convert YUV to RGBA accurately, and this will improve performance for playing certain video files, and so battery life should get better as well. Fractional scaling under Wayland now is also officially supported, which means the compositor won't render at 2x and then scale down to 125%, for example. It will render at 125% directly, so stuff should be less blurry and more energy efficient. On top of that, the compositor now handles the mouse cursor's movement in its own thread, which means it won't be impacted as much by anything else needing to be rendered, and the mouse cursor will move much more smoothly with much less latency. The rest of the compositor will also perform better due to that change. These are big background changes that will definitely make the GNOME experience smoother and faster for everyone. And in terms of settings, GNOME 45 brings the usual changes like every version. First, the settings app gained the new split header bar design. The about page gained a new system details dialog that will give you a bit more information with a copy button to quickly share these when you have to write a bug report or something along those lines. I am not sure why they didn't just add this information and the copy button straight to the about page instead of putting it in the dialog, but yeah, still nice, I guess. In the settings, you can also now close any pop-up dialog by pressing escape, which will make navigating these a lot easier. A few options from GNOME Tweaks also made their way to the date and time settings, where you can now customize the way the clock in the top bar looks, with the ability to display weekdays, the date, seconds, and week numbers in the calendar pop-up. And there are smaller changes as well, like the ability to remove a Wi-Fi network with a dedicated icon, a confirmation dialog to verify you actually wanted to remove that Wi-Fi network, the sharing page lost its global toggle since it didn't really make much sense, and searching through the settings has been improved with more keywords available to find various pages. Now, what isn't there in the settings in GNOME 45 is the proposed change to display fractional scaling options by default, with a more macOS-inspired design where you could preview the size of the text for each scaling factor. Accent colors were discussed, and they're now a standard that KDE already implemented, but there is no implementation in GNOME 45 either. There was also a screen sharing button planned for the quick settings in GNOME 45, but I could not find it anywhere either. Now, I was expecting GNOME 45 to be a really small and minor upgrade, but instead what I got is a lot of small minor upgrades. No big changes to the core experience of GNOME, but a lot of small tweaks here and there. The new image viewer, the slightly revamped cursors, the more efficient activities button, the admittedly not always perfect split header bar design, the much improved calendar app, the faster file manager, and generally more keyboard shortcuts and more settings and options make it a must have if you use GNOME. Of course, you will also lose some extensions as GNOME 45 broke compatibility with all of them. And while a lot of extensions are already updated to support GNOME 45, some might not be by the time you upgrade. There is also no support for the accent color standard, although it was just agreed upon, so maybe they just didn't have enough time to implement it. Now, they better add it for GNOME 46, though. There are zero valid reasons to refuse implementing accent colors. It doesn't break anything. You can choose the colors you want, so it doesn't break legibility either. It is not confusing for users, and it's already been adopted by virtually every single operating system out there. Bite the bullet and add it. Now, as always, how and when you'll get these changes depends on the distro you're using. Fedora 39 will get it, Ubuntu 23.10 will get parts of it, but not all the applications. Rolling releases should have it relatively soon, but if you use Debian Stable or an LTS distro, chances are you'll not get to enjoy all the new stuff that it brings. But at least you'll get to enjoy this segue to our sponsor. 
If you're looking to upgrade your laptop or your desktop and you want to run Linux on it, stop looking at computers that come with Windows pre-installed and crossing your fingers and hoping that Linux will run correctly on it and spending hours finding workarounds. Buy something that supports Linux out of the box from our sponsor, Tuxedo. They have a big range of devices that will cover every need and every price point, whether you need a laptop, a NUC, a tower, whatever the use case for office, gaming, whatever you want, they have it all. You can install your own distro or choose from a selection of distros that they offer. All the hardware has been picked specifically to run well with Linux and they even submit patches upstream to fix problems if they encounter them. On top of that, all devices are very customizable and all the laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo device. There really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. There's a like button, a subscribe button, a bell that you can ring, a comment section. And if you disliked it, well, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section as well. And if you really, really enjoyed the channel and you want to support it, there are plenty of links in the description below to do just that. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.